Hello and welcome to yet another worked exercise for Python for Informatics Exploring Information. I'm your exercise worker, uh, Charles Severance. I'm the author of the book. And as always, this material, as well as the book itself, is Creative Commons Attribution. So this exercise assumes that you sort of know how to edit files and have things set up. If you, if you need more help, go to www.pythonlearn.com and go through the installation process. So the exercise we're contemplating right now is exercise 5.1. Um, we're going to read a list of numbers and uh, deal with some bad data and ultimately compute the average and finish when we're done. And so we're going to we're going to do this um, stepwise like we always do. We're not going to just write this and try to you know imagine what the ultimate thing is. So the first thing that I'm going to try to to write is so the first thing that I'm going to try to write is the enter, enter a number, convert the number to a floating point, and then print it out just for you. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Um, keep a copy of that. I've got a nice copy on paper here. I'll refer back to my specifications. So here I have a um, text wrangler up. Uh, I will go, I'm going to go into my desktop. I've got this folder called Python for Informatics here. So I'll go into my desktop. Desktop, CD Python for Informatics. I do an LS, and there's the some of the other exercises that I've played with um, before. So I'm going to make a, a new file. Uh, I'll just say print hello. Just, you know, I don't know. I always start this way. That's how I do it. Uh, save as. I'm just making sure I'm already in that. Looks like I'm in the right folder. And I'll call this one um, numlist. .py. If all goes well, you'll notice that now that it has Python suffix, it's properly colored. And son of a gun, if I'm not in the correct directory, so let's go ahead and run this thing. numlist.py. Hello. So um, it's good stuff. Make this a little smaller. So there we go. So let's get started. So instead of saying hello, I'm going to just say, um, I'm going to get a string variable, imp, and say raw input, enter a number, colon, and then I'm going to add a space just to make it look a little prettier. Then I'm going to convert that to a floating point number. I'll call this thing num, and I'll call float as imp is a string, and I want an uh, integer number, a uh, floating point number, so I can add them up. And I'm just going to print them out just to sort of be cool. So I'm going to, on my Mac, I use the command S instead of all the clicky stuff, so command S. Now I'm in my terminal, I hit up arrow, so I can run it again. Enter a number, 789. That's looking pretty good. Uh, enter a number. That's looking pretty bad, but frankly, that's expect exactly what we would expect. If we're going to type garbage in, we're going to get a trace back. We'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. Okay, so, so it looks like that part's pretty cool. So our problem now is we want to take this, um, oh, let's, let's put that back in. Let's put this, um, let's put this in a loop. So how do we make a loop? Well, I'll just make an infinite loop for now. And I'm going to indent these four spaces. Make sure you have spaces turned into, I mean, tabs turned into spaces. Or it will just be and so I'm going to write this loop. Right now we're writing an infinite loop because it's always going to be true. Um, so let's go ahead and save this one. Um, Python numlist.py one two three four five six type another number. Now we're supposed to be able to type done. Well, our program ended because the float crashed. Right, the float crashed on line three, and so at least we killed our program because um, we wrote an infinite loop. It would have been prompting us for numbers forever. It would have never been done. 
So the next thing we're going to need to do is we need to get out of the loop. Okay. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to get out of the loop by checking to see if imp is equal to done. Fake. So that just basically says if the input the user types, uh, I'm going to break out. So let's uh, run this again. Three. Done. Now at least it runs and it, it gets out of the loop. The break comes down here. That was just pretty good. Let me just add a quick feature here that's not in the specification list. Um, we'll see if we get in trouble for this one. Uh, I'm going to say if len of imp is less than one, break. This is actually kind of an idiom here. Check for empty line. It's a bit of an idiom. So, so basically, maybe the poor user would not think to type uh, done because they didn't read the specifications. So we'll save that one. And you'll see now that I can just hit Enter key, and it sees that as done as well. That's probably a more clever way to do it and a more user-friendly way to do it. Or maybe it's a violation of specifications, but we're just going to treat that as vague. We'll leave it in there for now. But that's kind of a Python idiom that, you know, ending on an empty line, just because it's natural for the user to just hit enter and think, is this thing going to stop? Okay, so now our problem is, is we've got to count these things. So we've got this loop body, and it's running a bunch of times, and we want to count how many times it runs. So we'll make a variable called count, set to zero, and then each time we come through, we're going to add count equals count plus one. Now, oops. Now, I did not put the count here. And that's because I only want to count the numbers that I've actually read. So I'm, I've read a number because if I, if I increment my count here and I break, it'll be one too many. Well, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just say count equals and make that mistake. Right. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'll put it here, exactly where I say don't count here. Right. So I'm going to count here, and this is a bad place to count. So I'm going to save that, and this loop is going to go until it's done, and then it's going to print out how many numbers we've got. So you see here it's got a mistake. It's not a syntax error, it's a logic error, because we've got to count up to three, but that's because the last time through the code, you know, count was zero, we read a number, we added one to the count, read another number, added one to the count, and then we read another bad number, we added a number to the count, and then we end up with this break. So the, the count is wrong, basically. Okay? And so the the key is is that we gotta move we gotta move the count down. We only want to count valid data, we don't want to count invalid data. So what we were doing is we were counting the last non-data bit, and so it's just that's just you know another thing to look for. You know the the, the pattern here is, um, you know, read your data, decide if you've got bad data or good data, or you want to stop or whatever, and then do the work. So I'll put a comment in here called uh, do oops, do the work. So this is the work, and this is kind of um, handle the edge cases, right? And this is get the data, handle the edge cases, then do the work, and incrementing count is just part of the work. Okay, so uh, let's keep going. Um, now we've got to make an, our, our average. So average, of course, needs a total. And that's pretty easy because we're going to say total equals total plus num. Simple enough. So I'm going to print out num, total, and count. Okay, so, we'll, so now uh, 12, 14, 
14. So you see our uh, number is 12, our total is 12, and our count's 1. Number's 14, total 26, count 2, looking pretty good. Um, let's just hit enter, and the count is 2. So the only so we got count. So let's change this to be um, what we're supposed to change it to. Let's say average colon with a no space because the comma adds a space, and we're going to just say total over count. So let's run that. Nine, 10, 11. 10.5. So our numbers are working. So we're getting pretty close. We really have one more problem to solve, and that is that problem. The problem when we got crappy data. And we don't want to uh, use traceback as our mechanism. We just want to reprompt the user. So the key thing when you're dealing with this is the first thing to take a look at is the actual line in question. The line that caused the error, the line that caused the error is line 11 and it's this line right here. So we, we can't control what the user types. The simplest thing to do is to use the try accept to put take out some insurance on this particular line. It's like that's a dangerous line. And then accept tells us what to do. So now the question is, now let's put out a print statement. Right. Print what we're supposed to say, invalid input. Okay, so here we go. We've got um, invalid input, and uh, so we got an accept statement. Now, I've made a mistake on purpose. You can pause and try to figure out what the mistake is, but okay, you had your chance to pause, so let's go take a look at what the mistake is. Let's come up with some evil data that causes the problem. So um, 10 is our first number. 12 is our second number. And now I'm going to say Fred. So now you should be able to see what's wrong here. The problem is that basically Fred indeed says invalid input. That works because it runs down this line of code and it says invalid input. The problem is it still is executing this code right here. So the number, actually the float failed. We said Fred, but the number is 12. And that's because it's 12 from the last time through the loop. The last time through the loop. Okay, so it ends up adding 12 again, 22, and we have three numbers. And then we finish. Oops, Ooh, that was, was in the wrong window there. And then we finish. The average is not 11, which would if 10 plus 12, but it is in, indeed 11.3. So the problem is when we have this exception, we can't run this code. And of course, there's a lovely, lovely bit of Python that makes this solves this for us, and that is the continue statement. Continue statement says, I'm done with this iteration. You entered a number, it's crappy, I'm just not going to do anything. So effectively, instead of going down here, the continue goes up to here and prompts for the next one, so it doesn't do this code, right? It does not do that code, and everything is cool. And so that's the key. When we say invalid input, we do not want to run this code. Oops. Say goodbye there. So let's save this. So it continues our continues our friend on this one. So 10, 12. I'm doing these just so I can know the average should be 11. And then Fred. Now you'll notice it says invalid input, but because of continue, it doesn't fall through and do all the rest of that stuff. Um, and then let's hit enter to finish, and the average is indeed. 11.0. Okay, so again, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, more information, uh, uh, Python for Informatics, www.pyforinf.com. Thanks.